Hi everyone! Welcome to my channel. This is Jennifer and this is the first episode of the phonology series. Today we are going to be talking about the basics of phonetics and phonology. In this video, there are several things that we will discuss. The first, of course, is where phonetics lies in linguistic studies. And then we're going to be talking about whether phonetics and phonology are the same subject or are they completely different. Later on, we are going to talk about the approaches to the study of phonetics and phonology. And we also going to talk about how a speech sound is produced. Okay, so let's start with the very beginning. Where phonetics and phonology lie in the linguistic study? So linguistics is the study of language. And almost everything in this world use language. Even sign language is considered a language. So, yeah, linguistics is a very important part of humans' life. Starting from you are uh, starting from when you're a baby, you are already exposed to linguistics. You are already exposed to language because your parents will speak to you in their own languages. Now, the study of linguistics is divided into several categories, but the main ones are the core linguistics and the applied linguistics. The core linguistics include the study of sound, the study of word formation, the study of meaning of a word, and the study of sentence structure. In this video, we're going to talk about the study of sound, which is phonetics and phonology. Sound is the first level of linguistics analysis. Sound is the first level of language. Why? Because when you were a baby, you learn language by taking in sounds. You learn language by listening to sounds. You don't learn language by reading when you're a baby. You don't learn language by writing. You don't learn language by studying grammar. No, you just listen and later on you will repeat what you listen and that is what we are going to study. Sound, human speech sound. So phonetics and phonology, are they the same? In a sense, yes, they are. As you can see from the first four letters of the names, both have the word phone, the syllable phone, and it means that both will be talking about the speech sounds that human make. Speech sound. Speech sounds mean that sounds that you use to produce words that have meaning and it will be used for communication later. But are they exactly the same? Well, duh, no. Phonetics is the basic of phonology. Phonetics means that it it is a study of all speech sounds that human beings are capable of producing. And when I say human beings are capable of producing, it means that it doesn't matter what languages the person speak. So the most important part of phonetics is that if you have a normal speech organ, if all your organ are intact and if you are able to produce sounds using your mouth, it means that, yeah, you can study it. So all speech sound you can make, regardless of your native language, 
is studied by phonetics. So in phonetics, we don't see speech sounds in different languages. We will just categorize it or as something that you can you can make using your speech organ. In phonology, though, it is quite different. Why? Because phonology only studies speech sounds in certain languages. So, for example, uh, all sounds in English language will be able to be produced by people who are not English speakers. But in phonology, you don't study those sounds that are not English if you study English phonology. And since we are in English department, of course, we are going to focus only on the speech sounds that the English language can make. Although, because we are also in Indonesia, I'm going to put in some speech sounds that we, Bahasa Indonesia speakers, can make in Bahasa. Okay, and before we go on to talking to be to talk about phonology in our later videos, today we're only going to focus on phonetics and your speech organ. Okay, so yeah, let's go on to the approaches to studying phonetics. There are three main approaches to study phonetics. The first one is the acoustic phonetics. The acoustic phonetics means that you study speech sound using some softwares and lab instruments. So you will need to record some sounds and then you will analyze it using a software or some softwares. And you can see the intonation, the, the pitch, and then other things that are related to phonation process. And yeah, really, I really hope that before the semester ends, we can actually uh, put this into practice because I really want you to try some softwares to study acoustic phonetics. Crossing your my fingers and yeah, hoping that we can do that. Now, the second one is the articulatory phonetics. This is what we are going to be doing this semester, which is studying how speech sounds are produced and how to classify them based on the way, um, the place of their production and the manner of which they are produced. So this is the one that we are going to focus on. The third approach is Again, it uses um, lab instrument, the study of speech perception. So it requires some, some softwares, again, and uh, some laboratory recording, which we cannot do this semester. So yeah, we're going to focus on the second one, the articulatory phonetics. So yeah, those are the things that we are going to talk about this semester. Now, let's go on to talk about your vocal tract and the speech production process. So your speech organ, the vocal tract, it is it doesn't stop at your throat. Your speech organ the focal, your focal tract does not only uh, stop at your mouth or at your uh, throat, it goes all the way down to your lungs. And usually when you speak, the air will come out of the lungs. So if you want to see a visual presentation, it will be like this. So the air goes out from your lungs and it will touch your glottis which then will go up to your focal cords. This is where you will notice the sound is made. And then it goes up to your larynx and to your pharynx. Okay, your pharynx is an interesting organ because it decides what kind of voice you will make. So your voice characteristics, whether it is very throaty, whether it is high, high pitched and 
terpy, whether it is deep, will be decided by the pharynx. So, yeah, perhaps you can name one or two of your friends who have a very deep voice or one or two of your friends who have very high-pitched voice that is sometimes shrilly. The next part, the next important part of your vocal tract is called the uvula. The uvula can be in two different positions. The first one is raised. When your uvula is raised, it will close the bridge from your throat to your nose. So the air will come out of your mouth. When this happens, you will produce what we call as the oral sound, the round sound, like b, b. And when it's lowered, when your uvula is lowered, it will cover the track from um, your throat to your mouth, so the air will goes out of your nose. This is when we make nasal sound like m, n, and ny. So yeah, so when you say the speed sound ng, it means that the air will come out of your mouth, even though you, the, the voice itself, the sound itself will come out of your mouth. Well, if you're really curious whether or not this is true, you can always say the nasal sounds like m, ng, and put by putting your hand in front of your mouth and nose and see where the air comes out. Okay? And yeah, so the vocal tract will help us in producing speech sounds. The speech sound is produced in four different stages. And by this one, I, I mean that a single speech sound is made out of four different stages. So can you imagine if you're really, really uh, chatty on a particular day, if one single speech sound is created by four different stages, it means that you will have to work out a, lo a lot to, to produce 5,000 words a day. But, well, anyway. So yeah, the first stage is called the initiation process. The initiation process happens far down in your lungs uh, while the air is there after you inhale some air and there is no sound coming out of your mouth yet. In this process, the lungs will decide whether the mechanism that it will use is the pulmonic one or the non-pulmonic non one. Pulmonic airstream mechanism means that there are a lot of air involved in the production of speed sound. And it can come out in two different manner, the aggressive one or the ingressive. The aggressive sound production means that you will produce a speed sound as you exhale, as you breathe out. The ingressive one means that as you breathe in air, you produce speed sound. Bahasa Indonesia, English, um, Korean, Japanese, and a lot of other world languages uses the aggressive one. So it means that you speak as you exhale. Again, if you want to try, put your hand in front of your mouth and then try speaking. If you can feel the puff of air touching your skin, it means that the air is coming out of your mouth as you speak. Ingressive, well, try it. Breathe in and speak. It will sound kind of weird. Okay, that is the pulmonic one. The non-pulmonic the non one means that there is very little or almost none air involved in the speech production. This is very rare, actually. Only about 15 to 18 percent of the world languages uses this type, the ejective or click. And it does, the, the languages really sound like you are clicking your tongue, like. Well, 
Um, mostly, the languages that use this kind of airstream mechanism are the languages in Africa. And I cannot really pronounce the words properly, so I'm just going to link you to another video and upload it on, on Google Classroom. Okay, so if you want to watch it, watch it. It's optional. So yeah, that is the initiation process in which your lungs will decide which one, uh, which airstream mechanism it will use. And then when it goes up a little bit, it is called the phonation process. This is the second stage. In this stage, the one that plays a big role is your glottis and your focal folds. The glottis is a small membrane above a little bit above or underneath your focal folds and it will decide how the air from the lungs will be expelled. There are three positions of the glottis, the closed one, narrow and open. When your glottis is fully closed, it means that the air from the lung cannot pass. When the air from the lung can't uh, pass through your glottis, the sound that is created is a glottal stop. It is kind of, um, if you notice, some British people don't, uh, when they say the word bottle, they don't actually pronounce the T. They will swallow it, so it will sound like bottle. And yeah, when you swallow your T, when you, when you create that kind of sound, it is called the glottal stop. And the position of your glottis is closed. So the second position is the narrowly opened or not fully opened glottis. So yeah, the air will go out of your lungs, but it will create some kind of friction in your glottis, which make your focal cord vibrates. And when you make sorry, when your glottis make your focal cord vibrates, the sound that will come out of your mouth will be called the voiced sound. Voiced sound is a little bit heavy. And yeah, you can put your fingers or hand at the base of your throat and try uh, pronouncing B or Z. You will notice that your throat is vibrating. Now that is because your glottis is not fully open, so the air cannot pass freely. Of course, the opposite will happen if your glottis is fully open. There will be no vibration in your focal cord and you will create what we call as the voiceless sound. Okay, this might be a little bit confusing right now, but we are going to discuss about the voiced and voiceless sound uh, in our next video next week. So yeah, when the glottis is fully open, like when you say um, the sound sure, sure, try it, and put your finger at the base of your throat, you will notice that there will be no vibration at all on your throat. And that means that you will create non-vibration sounds, voiceless sound. Um, okay, when I say voiced and voiceless, it only means um, that your focal folds are vibrated or not. It doesn't mean that you do not create any sound. Voiced means your focal folds is vibrated, are vibrating, and the voiceless one means no vibration at all. Now moving on to the third stage, the third stage goes from your pharynx to your uvula. If you still remember the picture on the previous slide. So yeah, so in the oronasal process, the third process, the air will go either through your mouth to oral cavity or nasal cavity. If it goes out of your mouth, the sound you will produce will be round sound, like the one I gave example for, b, b, k, g. Or if it goes out from your 
knows the air, the sound you will make will be quite nasally, like mm, mm. Yeah, so this is the oronasal process. Again, in this process, the sound has not come out yet. This, the actual sound will be produced in the last stage, which is called the articulation process. This process happens in your mouth. In this process, the sound comes out of your mouth. Every sound comes out of your mouth. And in here, we have what we call as the active articulators, which is the things in your mouth that can move. It includes your lower lip and your tongue. And the second one is the passive articulator, which is the organ in your mouth that don't move. It includes the roof of your mouth or and your teeth. So, but really, you will have to be really careful and you have to be worried if, actu if your teeth move around. Probably you will need to go to see an, a dentist right well yeah so that is how speech sound is produced for those of you who like visuals more here is um the visual part so this is the initiation process so it happens way down in your organ way down in your lungs before it moves on to the second stage with happens here the glottis the pharynx and larynx so that is the phonation process and then it goes up a little bit to your uvula the oronasal process deciding whether the air comes out of your mouth or nose and the last one is the big one is your articulation process this is where the speech sounds come out. Well, okay, so I really hope that this explanation is easy to understand. And I think that is all I can share for today. I will be seeing you very, very soon in our discussion forum. So yeah, thank you for watching and please stay safe. Thank you.